my background. Um, I'm probably something a lot we would refer to as a systems native. It all started for me when I was still at grammar school, looking into philosophy and meeting Kierkegaard, who described the self as a relation that relates to itself, which is bringing forward the very essence of cybernetics and, and system thinking, looking into how do feedback loops and contacts bring about what we refer to as emergence, as holes being generated out of its part, but in that process becoming something that is different from the sum of its parts, which suggests a completely different worldview in contrast to uh, the dominant idea of linear reductionist engineering, modern science, which try to have clear-cut relationships of, of cause um, and, and effect and the, the world is in pockets that simple if you build a road, if you have infrastructure, um, engineering, all of that, yes, but beyond that what is often referred to as soft side which is much much huger, uh, there the world works differently and systems and cybernetics I learned and, uh, were informing me about a way to look at the world in a more that is fit for the complexity, the uncertainty, the amb ambiguity and the velocity of uh, well, volatility of the VUCA world. The entire discourse at the moment is all about is how do we meet the challenges of the Anthropocene in the 21st century. The entire United Nations Sustainable Development Goals revolve around that question and we see that we need this, it's not really new, but this systemically informed kind of thinking and approaches to meet those challenges and within systems, cybernetics, complexity, chaos theory. Um, we need to look for development, progress, improvement and innovation. And this is where systems innovation uh, comes into the picture for me. Mm. To not just sit there and say, saying, oh, system science has, has known it for, for 50 years now and, and now the, the mainstream is catching up. No, we need to develop that further. Um, it has not taken on uh, in the last 50 years it's, it's for different reasons but there's certainly one reason to not think about the, own, uh, the very discipline of systems, cybernetics, um, complexity in terms of improvement and innovation and that's, that's just why I'm so grateful for uh, this conference for systems innovation bringing that all together, bringing together the, the well-informed uh, uh, academic disciplines and we have a lot of people down there uh, who, who've been in, 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 into, in that field for, for years mm -hmm. and uh, the entire NGO field with uh, inspired young people who run projects and, and um, who are activists and want to change the world mm -hmm. and they, they who drive the action could stand on the shoulder of giants and that is something I would love to contribute to, to to see that happen. Mm. Uh, relate a little bit to, to what we do at the European School of Governance in terms of Anthropocene thinking, uh, which is not to say anthropos uh, Anthropocene sciences, because we have the problem with the term sciences that is very much refers to this empiric linear, linear ideas of truth while complexity is a field that is difficult to, to capture with this kind of uh, traditional idea of truth. You need to understand that it is not a classical science, but that, the, that, that system thinking or complexity thinking goes beyond what we used to refer to as sciences. It's uh, more complex, wait, complexity, <laughs> sports, more complex. 
thinking that is not can, cannot be reduced to just looking for empirical evidence. If if you if you leave the field of sort of two variables in, in mathematics, you right, equation with three variables and more, you you more have more than one solution. And then the question is, is that which solution is true? Mm, mm. Are they all true mm. or none of them? And then you see immediately that the focus on truth, the scientific focus on truth, does not uh, does not hold anymore. Perspective and what you, comes yeah, into yeah. And what you need is to learn to navigate this kind of complexity, the multiple truthers, the the, the multiple ways to draft the future, to approach the future, so that we are not preparing according to the idea of the one future that is coming, yeah. inevitably coming, and we need to prepare, but to to see that. With all that we do in the present, we are supporting the one or the other scenario of multiple possible futures. Yeah. And if we if we are there, then we can choose. And we can choose to say this is uh, the most desirable future out of the spectrum of futures, and we can prepare for that. And the criteria criteria for that may go beyond truth. They may may be functional adequacy as system cybernetics suggests, mm. they may be integration like integral theory suggests, or harmony like the theories of resonance uh, suggest. So um, it's, a, it's a different approach to, towards that kind of thinking altogether, which, and yeah. that comes back to your question, which bears the potential to unleash its full capacity mm. to serve um, to serve new ideas or bring about new ideas and um, enables us to, to come up with new practices. Mm. Oh, we just had that wonderful keynote from Sally Euron from the Forum for the Future and what I liked very much was, was her saying we need to, to do away, park away our egos and to collaborate. And that is goes far beyond sort of the the lip service of yeah well we come together for a workshop. And um, what we need to to see in civil society, especially in civil society, but also in academia, also in business, to to integrate, to find ways of smart integration that allow people not to to only to work together case by case, but to to create a field together in which new things. Uh, become possible and where they collectively cre create momentum and gravitas and gravitation towards uh, attracting more resources, more people. Because the situation we are living in at the moment, I earlier described in, in the introduction as um, there's an invisible Mr. Evil sort of giving a little money to little initiatives and little NGOs, um, too much to die, not enough to survive and setting up a competition that keeps these people busy looking for resources to sustain themselves rather than to really make a change. And if they would discover that united, they would be much stronger, they could pull their, 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 their resources and attract more resources, and by doing so, becoming relevant players in the field. Oh, that would be lovely, I would love to see that. Thank you.